us a little bit about about um, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to take a title from the margin of my uh, Thompson Chain Bible to give you a title to think about the peril of an empty heart. The peril of an empty heart. That's what was written in the margin of, of my math, of my Thompson chain this morning as I was studying this. But you go to the 12th chapter of Matthew, and uh, let's let's get let's get this the word out here. I'm going to read. Uh, several verses here that we've already covered to build a foundation, sort of, and then talk to you about something. Uh, let's begin. We'll read verse 38 through through uh, 45. <coughs> Certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Now, I want you to understand that he had been healing the sick, and casting out devils, and raising the dead, and they didn't want to believe in him. How many knows that folks do what they want to do? Huh? They still did not want to believe in the Son of God, now these are those Pharisees and they're, they're these Jews. They they should have been theologians. They had the word of God. They had all the prophets. They should have known, Amen. That that this man Christ fit all the criteria of being the Messiah. He claimed to be the Messiah. He told that woman at the well, Amen. She said, well, I know there's going to be a Messiah come at the last day. And she, he said, he that speaketh unto you is he, I am he. He was either the biggest liar that ever lived or he was God in the flesh. I think he was God in the flesh. What do you say? Woo. Huh? It's all in Jesus, children, giving the praise. I said, it's all in Jesus, giving the praise. It, it must have been frustrating in a sense. It is to me sometimes. I've been preaching out Brother Hale talking about being saved 28 years. I've held a revival that year he got saved right there. Amen. We went 40 nights in a row. Brother Hale, I believe you shouted every night, didn't you? Huh? Uh, I believe I did too. Now, February, yeah. Six weeks, yeah. Every night. I remember it. That's right. Woo. Praise the Lord. I, uh, you know, you, you, you preach to folks about the Lord and, and they, you just can't, they just can't see it. They just can't see it. You can't see it. You can't see this. You can't see this. You can't see something this big. Well, Christ told them. And here he exposed who they really were. He answered to them and said, An evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. Boy, he put it on him, didn't he? He said, an evil and adulterous generation seek about your sign. He said, there shall be no sign given to it. I like that. There's going to be no sign given to this wicked and adulterous generation. No sign, but the sign of, of the prophet Jonah. Amen. And that sign was, Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. It's a sign, it's just a symbol. And he says, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And then, and then, he, and then he gives this to him. He said, the men of Nineveh. Now, Nineveh is the place, the Gentiles, that Jonah went and preached to. And uh, they, they didn't know their right hand from their left. They, they were just a wicked bunch. And Jonah did not want to go preach to them. Now, they... Uh, you know, all of these Ninevites, now stay with me, i got something I want to preach to you the last five, 15 minutes here. But but Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. How many remembers reading the story? Got on a ship, going to Tarsus, opposite direction, paid the fire, went down. I've preached that many times. Amen. Now, when you compare Jonah in the scripture here, 
And I've already mentioned this some. I'll mention a little more. But in this scripture here, Jonah was only a type and a sign. And then the Lord said, all of those people in Nineveh got saved. Everybody got saved in Nineveh. And a preacher preached that didn't really want to preach. And he got mad when they did get saved. Amen. Didn't he? The Lord forgave them all. And he said, Lord, you told me 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed. But he didn't destroy them, did he? Because they repented. And Jonah got mad and went over under a gourd vine and pouted till a worm or something got in that gourd vine and out it went. And you know how it goes. Well, I'm going to say what Jesus said. A greater than Jonah is here. Woo! Not only did Jesus, amen, come willingly, amen, but he gave himself for the whole wide world could be saved. Amen. Jonah preached in only, what was it, 140 some thousand? How many was it in Nineveh? Jesus died to save the whole wide world. <laughs> I think I, I, with Jesus this morning, could say a greater than Jonah is here. I want you to look. I'm going to go down to this last deal. But I believe what Jesus is saying, Brother Zane, to these people are, you have a much better opportunity than Nineveh did because you have the Son of God in your midst. Now, I want to ask us this morning as we relate this to us, what kind of opportunity do we have? Huh? What kind of opportunity do we have? Now, have we responded according to the opportunity we had? Now, here's what Jesus said. He said those folks of Nineveh, he was talking to those Pharisees and those Jews. He said those folks of Nineveh are going to rise up in the judgment and be a witness against you because they had just one old preacher that didn't really want to be there that was that was thrown up on the shore that preached a message he didn't really want to preach and wasn't all that happy when it had effect. And they all got saved. And here I am, the Son of God, preaching to you, and you're still wanting a sign. You're still wanting when the time is right. You're still looking for a better opportunity. He said, Nineveh is going to rise up in judgment against you because you had a better opportunity than they did and you're still not accepting me. Amen? How about us? How about us this morning? I'll tell you what. Well, I've been, I, we've been pulling. The preachers have been pulling. We've been praying for revival. And I'm telling you what, folks are still not wanting, not taking revival. Amen? The Lord comes and visits us and speaks to us. We turn a deaf ear to it. Amen? It ain't God's fault, is it? How many knows that if every one of us go to hell, it won't be God's fault? Boy, he's tried for Now, he goes on down in this text, and I'm going to get to the end of it here in a minute. But he goes on down. Now, notice what he's talking about. He's talking about, uh, 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 first, a Gentile nation. Now, you know that's hard to stir them up, Brother Dennis, a little. Because they didn't want, they didn't like Gentiles much. And he said these Gentiles repented, and here you are, the children of the kingdom, and you are not accepting the Son of God that's standing right before your eyes. I've healed the sick, I've opened the blinded eyes, and all, I've, I've cured the lame, and all you know how to say is he did it on the Sabbath day, and, and crit, being critical and scrutinizing everything. He said, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you, boys. You're going to keep on being critical, and you're going to keep on unbelieving until you go to hell is what's going to happen to you. Woo! I'm about to feel like preaching a little bit here this morning. Then he went on to the queen of Sheba. Now here we had a Jew going to the Gentiles. Now we got a Gentile coming to the Jew. And I'm sure that ate eat him alive again. Here is a woman that came from afar, the queen of Sheba, came from afar because she heard a rumor about Solomon's kingdom and about his wealth and his wisdom and, and, and the number of, and how that everybody in his kingdom was happy and how a servant stood and, uh, and served him with, with, with happiness in their heart. And she said, I can't hardly believe this. Hey, man, uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I like the, uh, the fact, uh, amen, that uh, uh, we, we've got a, a word from the Lord, amen. We have heard, amen, about salvation. How many is glad? The Bible said, how can they believe in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? If we believe, we'll be saved. How can you believe unless you hear? How can you hear without a preacher? Amen. Come on now. This queen of Sheba heard the rumor. She heard the news. 
lose. Amen. And I want to tell you something in this house this morning. There ain't one of us in here that hasn't heard the good news. I said, there's not one of us that hasn't heard the good news. Amen. She came looking at Solomon's kingdom. She went on the land, all those marble palaces, that great temple that was erected that was worth billions of dollars, gold and ornate uh, marble and and, and and inlaid in gold and, and he had all these exotic birds and peacocks and, and had people waiting and serving and I'm telling you she looked all this over brother Tommy and she got ready to leave uh, amen she was so impressed uh, with Solomon uh, whoo feel like preaching a little bit I said she was so impressed with Solomon uh, amen you know why brother Needham hell got saved in January and shouted for six weeks every day uh, amen he was impressed. Uh, amen. With a greater than Solomon. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you, it's always been in me. Uh, I can't hardly take it. Uh, amen. It, you know me. I've been here with you 27 years. I can't hardly take a dry meeting. Amen. I just want to get up and walk the floor and wring my hands and sing and holler and hoop until I busted my innards out nearly. Amen. Trying to, amen. Let's not just sit around. Uh, there's a greater than Solomon here. Look at all the wonder. Look at all the splendor. Now I know you don't have to act like me. Everybody says hallelujah. Amen. But brother, we don't need to lose the wonder. Amen. Of the Son of God. Amen. Solomon. Amen. She said the half has not been told. I saw this, but the half has not been told. How many know this better experience? Amen. Than told. I wish I was a preacher. Amen. I tell you we ought to rise up uh, and say a greater than Solomon is here. Hallelujah. Woo. Is that right or not? You know the older generation got a hold of God and I mean they had a harder time. Brother Kevin Webster was here in Revival and one day I had to go down in, in over into Whitewood for something to visit. This, I believe I went over to see Sister uh, Coleman and uh and he went with me. I don't know. I, I think he just sat in the car. I can't remember. But I said, I'm going to take you with me. I'm going to go and visit this dear old saint. And then I said, I, I said I'm said, i going to take you up through the hollers and up the back way and up, up to the, you know, Jewel Valley and Chicken Ridge and Brown Ridge and over. I want to show him. And we went in there, and I showed him some of them old churches I preached in, Chicken Ridge and Brown Ridge and Smith Ridge. And, and them old churches setting up on rocks and sway looked like a sway back horse some of them and the the restroom facilities was in a separate location how many understands i took him out my first homecoming i preached out on smith ridge that little old building the little shock uh, used to be used to be uh altizer store out there anybody ever been out on smith ridge that's a famous place that little, little old store used to, used to be uh altizer store what was that lady's name that uh, run that store? And and uh, Brother Bobby Horn went out there a while and, and uh, rented it off of her. She let him use it and, and hadn't eaten in that. I'm telling you what, packed house. I've heard these mega churches talk about three services a day, you know, 6,000 members. Well, I'll tell you that homecoming was packed out every service. The building was 12 by 20, maybe. Huh? It didn't take but 14 people nearly to fill it up. You don't tell them all that, you know. And I tell you, I showed him all those places and showed him those churches out there in the middle of nowhere, and he, he said, well, why in the world did they build a church out here in the middle of nowhere? And I said, well, folks didn't have cars and trucks to ride. And most of them didn't. They built a church where they could walk to it and get to it. Amen. Now, if you let, let me ask you. If you got up this morning and you told your children, sister, Sheila, we're going to walk to church. You know, they start looking for the nearest church that they can find. Huh? Uh, my point is this, that the older generation, brother, they wanted to go to church. If I had to walk, if I had, if I had to ride in the back of a wagon, if I, if I had to, amen, to hitchhike, I've known saints of God whose companions told them if you go to church, 
Amen. How many members, Brother Houston, tell them about that old lady that her husband said, if you go to church, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to live with a woman that's, that's going to drive me crazy with this religion. And she looked at him and says, you can't threaten me with heaven. She said, if you kill me, I'll just go to heaven. And if you don't kill me, guess where I'm going? I'm going to go to church. Now, brother, I'll tell you this new generation, amen, they're not even, they're not even amazed by Solomon, let alone a greater than Solomon. But I'll tell you what, when I prayed through up there at the, at the, in Smith Ridge, that little old feeble prayer that I made that day, and I kept praying, and I felt the power of God, and I realized the richness of Christ and the depths of his riches. I realized the power of the Holy Ghost that could move on you and get in you and hold you up. Brother, I'll tell you what, I made, I made up my mind. Hey, man, I'm, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to heaven. Somebody say amen. And you know what he said? I, I, I got my last 15 minutes to preach my message. Amen. But you know what he's told them people? He said, the queen of Sheba is going to rise up in that day against you because here you've got a greater than Solomon and you don't care whether you come out to hear me or not. You don't care if I am the Messiah or not. And I'll tell you what, we need to realize what we have. Hey, Amen. Or that last generation is going to rise up uh, and they're going to say, hey, boy, uh, hey, man, I walked two miles to church in the rain. Uh, hey, man, to worship my God. Uh, and you won't even go, uh, hey, man, if the yard needs mowing. Uh, come on now. Uh, I feel like preaching to you a little bit. Uh, we need to recapture the wonder, amen, of who it is among us. Uh, it's the Son of God. Uh, we don't come, you know what, when people start picking at each other and finding fault, and they say, I ain't going down there because so-and-so goes. They missed the whole concept. This church is not about you. It's not about me. Are you listening to me? I'll tell you what makes the church is when Christ comes down in the midst and walks among the lilies. Amen. Come on now. Amen. I'm glad you're here. And we ought to live to one another. Can I have confidence in us? But really, the main reason we're here, there is a greater than Jonah here. He not only was in the belly for three days, and three nights, uh, he came out on that third day, uh, amen, alive, uh, rose from the dead. Uh, he's greater than Solomon. Uh, he not only built, uh, amen, a temple uh, uh, that's worth billions, uh, but he's building temples in the heart uh, of men and women every day. Uh, oh, somebody say amen. Now, this may seem a little unusual to you, but it's not. I want you to look now where he goes from here. In verse 43, he switches from Solomon to the unclean spirit. Now, notice this. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Now, we're going to go through this slowly. When the unclean spirit, you know what that tells me right there? What Jesus said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man. That tells me that unclean spirits can be in men. Spirits. It's not your spirit. It's an unclean spirit that has come into you. It's not the one you was born with. It's the one that has invaded your area. Now, a lot of people don't have enough faith even to believe in the devil, but he is alive. And he has a lot of spirits. He has a lot of demons angelic fallen angelic beings a third of the heavens the bible said we have not come into mount sinai but mount zion and an innumerable company of angels you know what the word innumerable mean too many to count and a third part of that is in the underworld how many is that probably untold you don't even believe this, do you, yeah, brother? I tell you. You know, I know there's a group come on. If somebody had a smoking problem, they'd call it a smoking demon. You know, if they had a trouble lying, they'd call it a lying demon. If they had, you know, if they had the hiccups, it was a hiccup demon. You know, and I'm not going to go that far. But there is evil spirits. And if that spirit gets in you, moves into you, then, then it's unclean spirit. It's a vile you say, well, I'm not a bad person. I'm just, you know, I'm not a... If that unclean spirit gets in you, amen. Now, stay with me now. I'm going to preach to you. Now, this talks about when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man. 
Now, you say, well, hallelujah. Well, that doesn't mean that this individual is safe. Really? No. Read on. Right. Now, this is in reference to the scriptures that I've just read to you. He was saying, look, look, greater than Solomon here. I have came to bring a new dispensation. I have cleaned out. We have reformed our lives. You have reformed. And really, Israel had reformed. They were not into the idolatry, really, like they had been in the years past. They had the religious uh, setup. They were going through the temple worship. They They had a position, but there was something wrong. They had been cleaned up, cleaned out. But there was nothing inside of their empty heart. Now, help me preach a little bit. I think a lot of times, Brother Dennis, now, I, I hate Brother Dennis have to go through this dry teaching, but I tell you, I feel the Lord here this morning. Amen. When that when that uncleanness is out, I'm going to tell you, whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Listen to me. There is more to a Christian life than dying out to sin. Did you hear what I said? Now, a lot of people, and a lot of, and I, I am too, when I see people not doing right, I try not to be just so bold that it would cause a havoc, but I try to preach and get a message from this book and straighten it up if I can. But it ain't all about reforming. We've got to be regenerating. How many understands what I'm talking about? We can't just reform. You can't just clean out things in your heart. You've got to put something back in. Because here's what happens when that unclean spirit, and he was getting ready to tell him, Brother Zane, he said, you've reformed, but if you don't accept me, this is what he's saying, if you don't accept me, that unclean spirit that went out of you is going to come back. And when he finds that house empty, garnished, I guess everybody in the world would have went by Brother Tommy and said, boy, you're doing good. You're garnished and clean. That's what these Pharisees were, Brother Mike. They were like white sepulchers, polished, glistening, shining. He said, but inside, there's nothing in you. There's nothing in you. There's a peril of an empty heart. Let me read the rest of this scripture. Be done in about seven minutes or more okay listen to this when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man and talking about the unclean spirit now do you believe this listen to this he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith this is that unclean spirit this unclean spirit walks and talks then he saith I will return unto my house, my house, hear that? From whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. You say, well, what about it? Now notice, are you listening to me? You may have exercised some things in your life out by sure willpower and accountability but if you fail to put the thing in there when that unclean comes back around amen and you've not put that in there that keeps him out he'll move right back in now you that's been around a while how many knows you witnessed it with your eyes he brings seven more how was it it said? Worse? Is that what it said? Is it there? Who's reading? What did it say? Seven more wicked than himself. Are you getting this? Brother, this is a lesson here this morning. Brother, that's why we come to church. We don't just join the church and sit down. You've got to have a prayer life. You've got to talk to God. You've got to put that Bible in. David said, I have hid thy word in my heart that I might not. Now, what if this unclean spirit came by and in that 
place was not empty, but someone was dwelling there. The Son of God was dwelling there. Woo, feel the Holy Ghost right here. How many knows that he said in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open unto me, amen, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. We'll have fellowship. I'll come in. When Christ come in, do you think he comes in as a visitor, brings his suitcases? Now, where's the guest room? Huh? Oh, no. He doesn't come as a guest. He comes to take over the house. Amen. You see, this house, amen, when that unclean spirit ruled that house, that was not the house and temple of God. That house belonged to the unclean spirit. Are you listening to me? And if you don't change ownership while he's out, then when he comes back, he feels the authority to come right back in and bring seven more worse than he is. Amen. Come on now. I want to preach to you a little bit. Amen. That's what happened. You know, you know the old saying, you don't backslide overnight. And I believe that in a sense. Uh, Amen. I think the first thing you do is lose the wonder of Jesus uh, that he's greater than Solomon. That's what these Pharisees did. Uh, They lost the wonder of who this Messiah really was. They were criticizing him. They were rebuking him. They even plotted to kill him. And they got it done. Uh, Amen. But I'll tell you what happened to them. Uh, Amen. Seven more wicked spirits uh, moved into Jerusalem uh, and Israel. uh, Amen. And they were more wicked than ever. (laughs) The Bible said to keep thy heart with all diligence. Sometimes I preach, and, and, I, and I hope you take it right. I know sometimes when you preach, people, I've had people tell me, you're the most arrogant person. I am arrogant. I, they take, because I take the authority of God's Word as arrogance. I'm not being arrogant. I'm humble. I, in my heart, I know I'm just in the same boat you're in. But I want to tell you this. There have been a lot of times I, I have preached, and I've prayed for people. I remember one morning I was troubled over some people. I was walking the floor and praying for them. And I don't want you to take this that I'm uh, praying all the time. Uh, well, you just about have to, don't you, huh? But I, I was praying, Brother Darrell, I was saying, Lord, I just stopped. And I said, Lord, do these folks ever pray for themselves? Huh? What are, you, what are you trying to say? I'm saying... If you don't take initiative in your life, I'm going to pray for you, amen, and I I don't do as good as I need to. My my mind is, uh, I can't hardly remember everything. I come to church sometimes, uh, and a request is made, uh, and I think, oh, Lord, uh, I forgot all about that. And you say, that's pitiful. I know it's pitiful, but it's true. Our mind. The Spirit is willing. That's why I get down to pray, and I say, Lord, you got better memory than I do. Just get them all. Amen. How many prays like that sometimes? Amen. Cover it all. Amen. But I want to tell you this. Amen. There's something you've got to possess. There's something you've got to put in your life. You're not just dead to sin. You're alive to Christ. You see, the plan of salvation is not just a crucifixion. It is a resurrection also. I wish somebody would say amen. And brother, we reckon ourselves dead, Brother Mark, but we also reckon ourselves alive in Christ Jesus. If our religion is all cross and crucifixion and we don't understand the power of his resurrection, we'll just sit around empty vessels until that spirit will move back in and you'll leave the house of God saying there was nothing to it in the first place. You gotta, you gotta possess something. God called the children of Israel out of Egypt. He got them out of Egypt, but that was not the end of the story. He had somewhere he wanted them to go. He called them out to take them in to a land that flows with milk and honey. He wanted them to possess places, houses that they never built. He wanted them to reap fields that they never planted. And that's what he wants for you. He wants you to put something, you, you take out, you take out those cravings and desires and habits of the world and you put back in the habits of a Christian and the customs of a Christian, a prayer life and gentleness. You take out lying and you put truth in. So when that old demon of lying comes around and he starts to get back in your house and there at the door is the truth. Can I help you, sir? 
Ah, uh, y'all just passing through. Good riddance. Huh? You put righteousness in there. When that old spirit of lust comes around, amen, and comes up to the door, knocks on the door, and righteousness answers, yes? Oh, wrong number. See you later. But if that house is empty, they move back in. Huh? You know, the Bible said it was better to have never than known the Lord as to have known him and gone back. Now, that's what the Bible says. Did it say that? Now, you can get back, but it's hard. It's better to stay with God. I said it's better to stay with God. The devil lies to you. The devil's lying to some right here under the sound of my voice. He's a liar. How do you know he's lying? When he opens his mouth. And sometimes he uses your flesh to do the talking. And, and you know, your flesh is one of his partners. And you'll think it's your own idea. He'll lie to you through the flesh, and old flesh will rise up, and you'll say, well, that only seems right. There's a way that seemeth right, and the end is death. You've got to know the truth. You've got to put something in there. You've got, hey, and I'm going to tell you something. There's some people here that know what I'm saying. You, re- you break down in that one area that you know you shouldn't do, and then another area will be worse, and another area will be worse. And before it know it, you're more wicked than you ever dreamed you could be. And so you start trying to justify it. Well, everybody's doing it. Well, it's not really right. It's not really. I don't really have to go to holiness church. I, I, there's a preacher, and I'll tell you, if you, 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 the Bible said they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, tickle my ear. Tell me something I want to hear. Tell me something that will that'll make the flesh happy. Now, you may not understand this, but brother and sister, if you'll crucify the flesh, if you'll die out to the world, you'll come alive unto God. And brother, that life in God is joy unspeakable. Woo! And full of glory. Hallelujah. Now, what he was telling is, now, he was telling this in relation to this whole chapter, what he said, about casting out devils, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand, about the prince of bells above and all of this. And he turned it back on him, Sister Loretta, and he said, look, look, your house has been empty and clean and garnished. You're not right with God. Hear me. But I'm here to make you right. If you'll invite me into your house, Amen then you'll have what you need. But they were rejecting him. Are you rejecting him? Are you a theologian? Can you take that Bible and argue with anybody? Brother, sister, that's not what it means to be a Christian. Just that you can take a Bible and argue in it with anybody. Brother, the Church of Christ can do that till they fall over blue in the face. Huh? Are you listening to me? It's... Born of God, new creation, brand new life from inside out. Somebody say amen. Come on, church. Let's hear this wholeness church say amen here. That's right. Let's stand. Now, I'll tell you what the plan is tonight. Now, I, 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 I know I'm saved, and I, I got the Holy Ghost, but I, I'm going to tell you. I, the Bible said, add to your faith virtue. And the virtue, knowledge. Knowledge, patience. And patience, temperance. And temperance, I can't remember it all. But there's some, this Christian experience is not subtraction and division. It's addition and multiplication. How many knows? Brother Hale's talking about being saved 28 years. I mentioned 35 years. And some here 60. Brother Zane, 54 years this year. Huh? Being saved. But you're not finished. I, I, can, I can tell you right now. And Sister Jerry can tell you right now. She ain't here, so we can't get her on the witness stand. But the Lord has added to Brother Zane this year. Brother Needham, amen, 28 years. But the Lord added to him even today. 
you all for quiet. You know, if we don't add to, if you haven't added to you, your experience, if you're not careful, you may be empty. You may believe all the doctrines of the Bible, all the standards of holiness. You may believe every bit of it. But if you don't have him, the word, in essence, it all flows from in you, then you're in dangerous place. Huh? Am I right or not? I want you to lift your hands and ask the Lord to bless. Amen. His word in the lives of individuals here this morning. Amen. Let the Spirit of God touch your life. Amen. I want you, come on now.